with my panel, MSNBC analyst and former federal prosecutor Paul Butler, also the author of the new book, Chokehold. And with us, Tom Steyer, the founder and president of Next Gen Climate and a liberal activist, and two MSNBC political contributors. Jason Johnson is a politics editor at TheRoot.com, and Brett Stevens, a conservative columnist for The New York Times. Paul, let's start with you. How troubling could this new report potentially be, not just for Donald Trump Jr., but Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort, who were part of the campaign, Jared Kushner, a senior advisor to the president, and seriously, Paul Manafort, not new to this rodeo. He knows how it works. So it's a federal crime to solicit a contribution from a foreign national. A campaign contribution can be cash money or it could be anything of value, including opposition research, including dirt on Hillary Clinton. So when Trump Jr. says he went to this meeting knowing that this foreign operative, this Russian lawyer, had goods or he thought he had goods on Clinton, he's exposing himself to federal prosecution. And it's not just Trump Jr. It's hard to believe that Trump Sr. didn't know about this meeting. I mean, look at what's going on. He's actively seeking information about Hillary Clinton. A month later, he says, if the Russians have emails, I'd sure like to see them. How does he not know that his son, his son-in-law, and his campaign manager go to a meeting with a Russian about dirt on Clinton? Well, Again, he's exposing him. The president himself is, is further implicated in collusion. Someone who knew what went on in that meeting would be the lawyer who sat down with Donald Trump Jr. And I want to take you now to Moscow, where NBC's Keir Simmons stands by. He just wrapped an exclusive interview with that Russian lawyer who is at the center of this controversy. Keir, what did she tell you? Well, she tells a, a you know, at times confusing and fascinating story of uh, the way that she was, she got a call. Now, she was uh, talking to people, friends, she says, acquaintances, uh, telling them that she wanted to try to reach out to powerful people in the U.S. Uh, and uh, saying that she uh, had uh, questions uh, about a uh, particular uh, act, U.S. Uh, legislation and that she also uh, maybe had some information about the Clinton campaign. Uh, she says that then, fast forward, she says that she got a, a phone call from someone, she doesn't know who that was, uh, telling her to come to Trump Tower. Uh, when she got there, she was met, she says, by a man she now knows to be a man called Robert Goldstone, who is a, a publicist. Uh, he then, she says, took her upstairs uh, to meet uh, with uh, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, and and also in the room, Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort. Now, she didn't know at the time who they were. And she says, for example, uh, one of them spent most of the time just looking at his phone. She says that Donald Trump Jr. took the meeting. It, it's an interesting insight into what it's like, what it was like at that point. This is June in 2016 to go and be involved in that kind of a meeting. She says Donald Trump Jr. took the meeting uh, and that it finished in you know, 20 or 30 minutes and, and, and that she was disappointed with the meeting, honestly. Wow. What was the purpose of that meeting? I never knew who else would be attending the meeting. All I knew that Mr. Donald Trump Jr. was willing to meet with me. I could recognize the young gentleman who was only present in the meeting for probably the first seven to ten minutes. And then he stood up and left the room. It was Mr. Jared Kushner and he never came back, by the way. And the other individual who was at the same meeting was always looking at his phone. He was reading something. He never took any active part in the conversation. That was Mr. Manafort. They had the impression, it appears, that they were going to be told some information that you had about the DNC. How did they get that impression? It's quite possible that maybe they were looking for such information. They wanted it so badly. Have you ever worked for the Russian government? Uh, do you have connections to the Russian government? Yep. No. So there you go. She says that she uh, does not have uh, direct contact with the Kremlin, that she wasn't. I asked her very specifically, you know, what, do you have direct contact? Were you asked to go and do this? Were you pushed to go and do this uh, by uh, Russian government officials in any way? And she, she says, no, that that is not the case. All right. Uh, we're gonna, you can watch that full interview online. I've got to get my panel here to weigh in on this. Tom Steyer, Donald Trump Jr.'s lawyer, says this 
Much ado about nothing. Well, it's not surprising that he'd say that. But the fact of the matter is, I think this incident shows something incredibly profound about the Trump administration and the Trump family, which is what? there are no rules. If you think about it, they went to meet with a Russian to try and conspire against the Clinton campaign. They then lied about it. They then denied it. They then ultimately said it's absolutely unimportant and hired a mafia lawyer. What we see is two things, a culture of deceit at every level, consistently, and secondly, a truly family-oriented culture, where you see the, not just his son, but Donald Trump Jr., his son-in-law, who's purported to be his main advisor and his campaign uh, organizer. So when you see that, don't forget, this is the family where his daughter sat in for him at the G20. I actually learned from someone uh, within the Trump administration, it was President Trump himself, who was insistent upon having his daughter uh, sit in for him at the G20 meeting. His daughter, who said just a couple weeks ago, you know, I'm, politics isn't my thing. When you're sitting between Theresa May and Angela Merkel at the G20, girlfriend, that's politics. Brett, Look. then why would someone like Ted Yoho say, I take a meeting like that. Why would we hear a Republican congressman put himself out there and say, you got it, oppo research works for me. This ain't oppo research. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, this is, uh, is or at least borders on collusion with a foreign government. And the, and the White House's defense seems to be, well, they didn't get anything out of it, so it's okay, which is like saying, uh, we called the drug dealer, but he was he was out of what we wanted, so we couldn't we, we couldn't obtain it. That's about the level of the defense. There's another angle that I think is being missed here, which is that this Russian lawyer was attempting to influence the Trump administration. Her purpose was to get something called the Magnitsky Law um, repealed, overturned in a potential. Uh, uh, one of the few bipartisan things that's happened in the last few right. years. Right, and one of the most important things because um, Russian agents and we think the Russian government murdered a Russian lawyer and whistleblower who uncovered a $230 million embezzlement scheme. And the Magnitsky Law has been one of the most effective tools by the United States and other governments of putting corrupt Russian officials, holding them to account. The fact is that the Russian governments believed that, the, that a Trump presidency would be friendly to their interests. So you have to also reflect on what they were trying to get out of the meeting beyond the question of um, uh, influence, uh, of, of hacking the DNC or, or offering the Trump administration damaging information about Hillary Clinton. But that's not a surprise. You knew that, that, that that's what Russia would want. So Jason, to you, Adam Schiff just moments ago spoke on MSNBC whether or not uh, he viewed this as collusion. Take a look. Uh, we actually don't have the sound, but in your mind, whether we're going collusion or bordering on it, how, does, how do you view all this? Well, I also go back to the source, which is this is coming from the White House. That, that's where they're getting this information from. So somebody, somebody in this administration thinks this is a much of a problem or at least wants to put this all on Eric Trump's shoulders. And I think that's a telling Donald Trump. Uh, yeah, uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s uh, uh, shoulders. I, I think in general, not only is this sort of an example of collusion, this shows that they were open to it. I mean, look, I've run campaigns a lot Lots of people watching here have run campaigns. You are very careful about who you meet with when you are a member of a campaign staff. You don't just run around with anybody. And it's hard to believe, unless Trump Tower is some house of mirrors or some fun house, that you had all these people going in and out. Reince Priebus shows up that day, everybody else shows up, and no one had a conversation with the now president of the United States about what was going on. This shows that there was a level of collusion, there was a level of discussion, and these guys were willing to talk to anybody if they thought it would help them, which means that our entire country is potentially at risk. Paul, the Russian lawyer says they wanted the meeting so badly, i.e. Donald Trump Jr. or the Trump campaign. They could make the argument, yes, we wanted opposition research. We wanted to get the dirt on Hillary Clinton. If they were to make that argument, what would you say from a legal perspective? I would say that attempting to solicit attempted collusion is just as much of a crime as the substantive offense. So if you seek information from a foreign national, um, it doesn't matter whether you actually get that information, you're still implicated. So Donald Trump Jr., he's got some explaining to do. Uh, Robert Mueller's gonna invite him for a nice little friendly chat with a couple of FBI agents and some prosecutors, and he's gotta decide whether he comes for it, whether he's fully forthcoming, or whether he takes the fifth. So that's a serious issue for somebody who's the son of the President of the United States. 
Tom Steyer, you have called for President Trump's impeachment before, and many people have said, you're getting way ahead of yourself, that's not going to happen. How much of a role do you think this can play? It is unique that President Trump, a man who does not exhibit much restraint, has basically said nada about this, except didn't know about it, wasn't there. Look, the president's already obstructed justice. He fired the FBI, the head of the FBI, for pursuing the Russian investigation. There's no doubt. We don't really know what happened with the Russians, but we saw the president leave a meeting and suggest that we should do a cybersecurity compact with Russians to prevent hacking into elections. That shows an, a, a disregard for truth, a sort of leaving of reality with regard to Russia. Every single time Russia comes up, we see this administration, this president, his family, and everyone around him lie, behave completely incongruously, and there is something there that is absolutely driving them to do things that make no sense for the American people. They have already obstructed justice. This shows a culture where there are absolutely no rules, and the American people are at risk the question is, when are the Republicans in Congress and the Senate going to say enough and realize that we're way past any kind of place where impeachment is, is well, that's, relevant? That's the, that's the key question, because, I mean, those Republicans watching the show should ask themselves, what would they be saying if all the facts were the same, but right. Hillary Clinton were president. And we know what they'd be saying because we have the experience of the Clinton cash book and the long history of Republicans pursuing the Clintons on account of their ethical transgressions. So it's not, it, uh, re Republicans should just ask themselves out of a sense of intellectual honesty. If you had a Democratic president talking with Russian agents or Russian lawyers about finding incriminating evidence against a Republican presidential candidate, a Mitt Romney or a John McCain, what would they say? All right, we are out of time. Well, it doesn't need to be partisan because Robert Mueller is there and he's on the case. All right, next, much more on Don Trump Jr.'s meeting with a Russian lawyer, Deputy 